I am Park Kwang Yong, and I'd like to talk about headless CMS in line. To、uh, introduce myself, I'm working as a server engineer. I'm interested in no-code paradigm, and I am interested in technologies that make developers' life convenient. And from university to my work in line, I've been doing research, and I'd like to talk about how to make dynamic websites without backend developer. How did Tech First website、uh, come about? The Tech First website that we made was created with just front-end、uh, developers, without any server developer. So we were able to develop the website without server, without DB. In developing your sites, if you use、uh, the headless CMS, you can develop your own websites without the server and just with the front-end. I would like. To talk about how we were able to serverless website, you store the data file and the site information, and then you load the data file in React. In that case, when the planner requests a change in the site, the developer will have to revise and modify the data file every time. And、uh, typo or add new page. These could be some other requests. So we needed to come up with a way to respond quickly to the planner's requests. For the planner, we felt the need to provide the admin page for the site management. But if you come to think about it, in order to create an admin page, you need to go through backend development and infrastructure setting for the servers. But we are tight for time, so every time. That we need to do repetitive development,、uh, we will, you know, we will not be spending our、uh, time valuably. So the Tech First website was made、uh, headless CMS, not as a backend server. If headless CMS is used, then we can develop without backend development with and without setting the infrastructure. So let's dive in to headless CMS. Headless CMS is different from the traditional CMS in that the traditional CMS is connected、uh, closely between front end and CMS, so you cannot easily change the front end development language or structure. So when we get a request, it will be difficult to apply to the site, and you have to do it within a set framework. But as for the headless CMS, the focus is more on CMS. Headless CMS exactly means that there is no head, and by head we mean front end. So the front end can be developed、uh, to suit the project. For example, the development platform and the development language. So it must be interesting, right? Then how is the front end connected with the headless CMS? Headless CMS is connected to front end through the API. From a web developer's perspective, if you develop through the headless CMS, React, Vue, and Vanilla JS, you can select freely from the frameworks that are suitable for your project. And headless CMS has other benefits as well. Let's say, for example, there is a notice on the site. And the notices are the same on the left and the right hand side. The designs may be different, but functionally, the notice has the same function A on sites A and B. But every time we develop the site, if we were to develop the notices, then we had to go a, through a repetitive process. So we wanted to innovatively reduce that work. And how was that possible? And we thought of headless CMS. If we use that, we could reduce the redundant work in the server area. So when we developed through a server, the work was repeated. But through headless CMS, we can replace that. Let's compare the development process between backend server and through the headless CMS. The API that we need to develop is the、uh, Notice API. Let's first look at the backend server development. 
There could be many tasks, but I divided into three for simplification: DB design, API development, and deployment. Let's first look at database design. On the notice table, including all the columns, including title, we uh, made the database table through DDL, and the actual table was set. And after that is server development. You create notice API, and then if there's a call for notice table from the table, you can view the data. And you take that value, and you can answer the query. So this is the coding, and this is a deployment. You build the code and deploy to the server. So now let's look at headless CMS. First, you create the notice collection, and including the title, you create all the necessary fields. Done. API has been created, and you can use it right away. If you use Atlas CMS without the backend development process, you can easily make all the APIs, and there is no separate deployment. From three years ago, we started building headless CMS with on based on open source, and we introduced it to you on Line Developer Day 2020. And Line is using headless CMS actively to develop and operate projects. For example, Line Creative, Line Careers are these are the static sites. That have been operated with headless CMS, and they are still in good operation. But now, I would like to talk about why we had to limit the use to the static sites. And this is uh, just a piece of information that we are sharing with you. Through a model setting, you can uh, create APIs. Uh, by using headless CMS, but you need to go through rebooting to apply that to model API. And during rebooting, you could not get the API requests, and due to low processing speed, the API requests could be only handled in a limited manner. So from the headless CMS perspective, it would be difficult to get API requests on a real-time basis, so we used headless CMS in a Jamstack method. Have you heard of Jamstack method? I'd like to explain to you. If you use SSG, you can view the data through and on headless CMS and create HTML. And that HTML will be deployed on the web static hosting server, and the user will access the static web page. But the downside is every time you change the content on the site, you have to go through the repetitive process of deploy, build and deploy, build and deploy. But uh, remember what I talked to you about headless CMS? I said that it's good for front end. There is rebooting and there is lower speed, but can you still use it? Yes, you can use it, but as I said, it's being used only on a limited basis. So from three years ago, we started using it, but we wanted to create a better headless CMS. So we gave it a lot of thought. We were thinking of whether to change the open source or to develop a new. If you modify the open source, you will have code forking from the open source, and the newly released versions would be difficult to apply to our solution. And as I mentioned before, because of these limitations, it would be difficult to solve the issues. So we decided to uh, newly develop. The beginning of the structure improvement was uh, started on uh, changing the method of storage from file to database. In the earlier version, when the developer modified the model information, 
you needed to reboot your server, and during that reboot, you could not get the API request. But now, since you're in storing the model information on the database, you don't need to reboot. And so you can get the API requests anytime. In the past, the model information was stored as a file. It was difficult to share the files amongst servers, and you needed to reboot. And so you needed to, it was difficult to uh, do the graceful restart and deploy. But since the model information is stored on the database, we didn't need to reboot, and the server to server stability was guaranteed. We just ran one server in the past, so when there was a failure on that single server, we could not get API requests from the other servers. And so we solved this issue with the database solution. And another benefit is we, are, we can now scale out. So compared to the previous performance, there was a 400% improvement. Of course, 400% improvement is a huge step, but this has been gained through scale out, so it was not satisfactory enough. And uh, 300 TPS was not enough for the users to use many services. So with the improved structure, we moved on to improving the performance. Compared to the backend database table, Headless CMS has a complicated structure. I'll show you an illustration to explain why. Let's say we're making the uh, notice. There are three types of notices, text, image, and video. Let's say there are three types of notices. So in the notice table, the type will be added and depending on the type format, column can be added. So in this case, maybe we could create a common column to store the data. That's what people may think, but I would like to introduce an extreme case. So. We are going to add separate fields for video and image, respectively. So we can store as follows. For each type, column will be stored differently, and the unused columns are treated as nulls. But uh, when uh, types are added in the future, columns have to be added further, so this is very cumbersome. So the headless CMS adopts the dynamic component so that uh, the data structure can become more compact. And we use the components zone. And with this, users can uh, select the notice type easily. So let's say the image notice is going to be written, then the image URL field value will be selected and that will be exposed to the user. And the users can enter uh, the value easily. And when querying API, the image field value is added. So the type can be entered and depending on the type, the front end will handle. So this is a very nice uh, API structure, but there are another problems. So if we make a dynamic component, component table had been managed separately. But in this case, uh, the dynamic components became uh, slower and more complicated with more relations. If notice is going to be queried, then the models related to notice have to be connected. And when relations are made built with other uh, model components, then uh, relations have to be built further. So in headless CMS, users can modify and expand the models. So this condition was very challenging for the headless CMS because it puts a lot of limitations. So the increasing relations will affect 
the database model creation and query time as well. The query time will increase. The x axis is the relation count, and the y axis is time for processing. With more model relations, you can see the processing time increasing. So we put a lot of thought on how to resolve this issue.、Uh, we had countless、uh, nights. That we had to work on this issue, so we decided to store the model information in model cache storage. Model cache in、uh, storage、uh, stores the aggregated model information. So, model information is not created for every API request, and model cache storage can be queried. And、uh, now we are seeing the flow before and after adopting the model cache storage. And when the GET API request comes from the front end, the model information is、uh, queried for notice, and the model for notice is created, and、uh, the relations are recursively queried. And the model is used to query the data in the database, and the front end response and、uh, the request is、uh, completed. So let's see the improved API flow. The model cache、uh, storage queries all information related to the relations, and the notice is queried, and the information that are related to the notice are all、uh, queried at the same time. So we don't have to repetitively query, and now、uh, the database data can be、uh, queried. So the processing time can be compared before and after adopting the model cache storage. Now, even if the、uh, relations of models increase, the performance does not drop rapidly.、Uh, we have、uh, resolved the issue of time for creating modeling. However, we still have issues related to data query.、Uh, when there are compli complicated situations, then we have more joins and、uh, the performance will drop. So let's query the notice API. Then the notice re relations and the components will all join. So in this simple case, there are at least ten joins to create data.、Uh, when the user adds、uh, every component, then the number increases exponentially. So bringing data with join will touch limits. So. We decided to adopt a reverse normalization of data to store the data. However, reverse normalization itself wasn't easy. Before reverse normalization,、uh, when、uh, the reaction data was deleted, we only had to delete the column. But after we did、uh, reverse normalization, all data had to be queried and all reaction field contents had to be deleted in order to maintain consistency. So we thought about how to resolve this issue. So,、uh, aside from that, we if we develop using headless CMS,、uh, there may be a lot of problems that we may face. For example,、uh, we may have to、uh, migrate from the development environment to the production environment. There may be some uh, demanding uh, situations. So this is how we have、uh, resolved this issue.、Uh, after developing in the dev environment, then we migrate to the pro production envir environment, and. Even only after、uh, releasing to the production environment, clients can access. So we、uh, use the clone project clone to resolve this issue. And、uh, when there is a data change, when data changes,、uh, the data changes are propagated to the register server. So we used Webhook to implement this. And、uh, the item scheduling function is also necessary. So this is、uh, switching item to open or closed at a scheduled date or time, and this had to be included in headless CMS. We didn't want this、uh, function to be dependent on headless CMS, so we decided to move away from monolithic architecture towards microservice architecture. So、uh, microservice architecture adopted the CDC. C technology, CDC,、uh, 
identifies the changes in the database and uh, that enables post-processing. So when com comments reaction field is deleted, then the CDC module can conduct post-processing. So I have uh, talked about uh, what kind of uh, reliability and performance improvements have been made and how they can be made through Headless CMS development. And now I'd like to introduce the uh, major services of LINE developed through Headless CMS. And this is the TechFirst website. Uh, the server and DB do not uh, uh, exist separately for tech first. All functions have been developed through Headless CMS. This is Line Developer Day 2021 website. In Line Developer Day 2020, we operated a total of 23 servers, but uh, with the Headless CMS, we could replace them with a single server. Now, this is the Line Engineering blog. Uh, we have developed it with the word WordPress technology, uh, but uh, we have now migrated 1,500 uh, postings to, uh, to uh, using Headless CMS. Now, this is the Lines NFT platform, Dozy. The developers of Dozy front end has renewed their sites with the Headless CMS lately. Uh, Dozy related sites are planning to migrate with uh, the headless CMS technology. So not only the new project, but existing services are redeveloped through headless CMS. This attests to the convenience of headless CMS. So with these improvements, we have been able to make 4,400% performance improvement. So we could be able to call API at the front end real time, and the service is provided reliably 24 hours a day. And now we can do this with the headless CMS. And every month, 131 headless CMS projects are created every month at line. So I hope that uh, the audience could enjoy the environment where you can develop a front end without uh, back end through the headless CMS. So I have introduced lines headless CMS. Uh, I have uh, introduced this in a relatively short period of time, but I would like to still thank you for listening. Thank you. I am Pak Kwang Yong. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Mr. Park. Let us proceed with the uh, talk. We will have the interviewer uh, to have an in-depth discussion about the presentation. The audience is also welcome to ask questions. Please use the press the uh, question mark on your screen to post your questions. We have as the interviewer from Yahoo Japan, Masanari Hamada. Please uh, turn on your video and the microphone. Uh, please introduce yourself, Mr. Hamada. Hello, nice to meet you. I am from the CTO office of Yahoo Japan. I am Masanari Hamada. Thank you very much. Uh, you have now listened to Mr. Park's presentation and know what comes to your mind. Thank you, Mr. Park. Uh, we are doing headless CMS in some of the projects in Yahoo Japan, and we plan we have plans to roll it out further. So in that sense, your presentation was quite helpful. You talked about internalizing headless CMS. How long did it take for you to develop it? It took about five to six months and we launched it and it has been in operation for over a year and many projects are using headless CMS. Thank you. Thank you very much. So you have done it in a relatively short period of time. So I think that's very wonderful. Next question. So there are a couple of OMS for headless CMS, contentful, and so on. But without using this, you have been able to internally develop the headless CMS. Uh, how could you, that be 
available? Well, from three years ago, uh, we have been localizing um, the service, but there had been some difficulties, so we decided to develop an internal um, service. Thank you very much. Is there a product that you used as reference in your development? Strapi and other types of headless CMSs are all our references. And we wanted to develop a better function uh, compared to the existing headless CMS. And that's what we developed. Thank you very much. So you have created new functions. What are those new functions? So the development environment and the release or production environment have been separated. Uh, when that is separated, then when uh, it was difficult to make changes or stop the development, but with our headless CMS, it was different. The development environment and production environment had been uh, separated, and uh, with that, the release or deploy environment had been uh, established as well. So uh, the development and production environment could be run separately, and then when it was time to uh, release, then it is facilitated from the development to the release environment. Thank you very much. Uh, you talked about performance issues, especially if you add one field or relevant models uh, could be used for the convenience of the users. After resolving the performance issue, up to uh, were there any limits or that you placed on the users? If there were limitations, then I wouldn't have been able to advise people to use headless CMS in their development. It was developed so that there is no limitations, and even if there are many layers, you could use the headless CMS without any performance deterioration. Thank you very much. I think this is a very great technology. Uh, can you use it internally? Anyone can use it in the company? Yes, in line. Headless CMS is used to create projects, and it's uh, a very common thing and a very natural thing. So the our headless CMS performance is very good, and it's uh, very easy to develop with headless CMS. Thank you very much. I have one additional question. We there compared to CMS with head, was it dif different to develop the headless CMS from an organization's perspective? If you were to use headless CMS, were there any challenges that the organizations had to overcome? Well, as for our headless CMS, it is similar to the general backend development. So from a user perspective, they could use Vue or they could use it in various environments. But uh, as for the connected parts or any parts that are repeated, we could add additional plugins so that we could make it uh, front-end developer friendly. Thank you. So developers may face difficulties. For example, the in the Bellevue environment, uh, they have to find if there are any challenges. But what about uh, the headless CMS? How is the preview environment enabled? Uh, could you uh, give the question again? For example, when API is developed and there needs to be some changes, then if we make those changes real time, then there might be some failures in tests. So before releases, we have to check in the preview. 
So what about uh, inline CMS? How did you respond to these challenges? Maybe I could show you the slide again. We have a development environment and production env environment, which are separated. And the development environment contents can be automatically uh, forwarded to the production environment. So the tests and API previews are all tested. And then uh, these functions are released to the production environment. This is what we support. Thank you very much. With just one click, you can deploy to the prod environment, correct? Yes. It's uh, wonderful. I think it will be very easy to use. This will be my last question. When you scale, what areas do you expect? Any problems or room for improvement? As for headless CMS, the database is dependent on the headless CMS. In other words, let's say there is database and other services, you will not be able to use headless CMS. But we want to solve this in headless CMS. In the, through the headless CMS, we want to uh, be able to uh, have the data on the connected databases, and we want to be able to work on that, and we are researching that. Thank you very much. So there are questions from the audience. So you have developed, did you develop your headless EMS from scratch? And how many members are operating this project? Yes, as you have mentioned, we have started from scratch. And I first started the development. And then after we opened this, many other developers have joined. Um, I have done the server side, and the front end ha has involved about two people. There are about 20 people involved in the development process. Thank you very much. And a follow-up question. I want to know about the back-end architecture. If I think the relational database will be used, and why did you use the RDB? Well, the first structure of headless CMS was uh, similar to relational database. So naturally, we used the relational database to start the development. But as I said earlier, there were many interdependencies, and this led to lower speed. So partial tuning was done so that we are using another database. And to talk about the architecture, we are using the Microsoft architecture. And based on that, we developed it and is, are using it. Thank you very much. Just one more question. You mentioned performance. How can it uh, withstand the site development? How long can, how much parallel uh, development can you do? Do you have to increase the build? Well, as you have mentioned, uh, we have talked about performance and we have uh, raised about 4,400% uh, performance improvement for a single project. We can add more parallel projects. Uh, so you can scale horizontally, correct? Yes, correct. We can do scale out. And if we add servers, then we can scale performance even further. Mm -hmm. 
And so you mentioned video field. So headless CMS uh, picks up from other database and register. If that can happen, it will be more convenient. Are you considering this as well? Yes. Our team is also considering that as well. We are uh, currently conducting research on that field. Uh, so, thank you. Uh, this is another question from the audience. Every time you do preview, then build could take time. In doing front-end development, what do you think about the time spent? Could you repeat the question? Yes, uh, let me try again. Headless CMS is uh, using used for front-end development, but every time you do preview, you have to do build, then the front-end development will take time. Is that true? We do not have the build process anymore. So by uh, storing in the database, we don't have the build or the deploy step in the middle anymore. So that is another improvement that we made with our headless CMS. Thank you very much. Just one more question. So if you look at the validation function, we have that in other CMS. What about lines headless CMS? Do you have any additional function as such? Yes, we do have that. In terms of validation, uh, we put limits on text length, or uh, the scope of number will be limited, or the numbers could be categorized so that um, some uh, only a specific text could be included. So. We put validation on uh, particular field properties. So you can receive just the right amount of data and the just ty right type of data through filtering as well. Thank you very much. Uh, another question about the database. You talked about scaling to microservice architecture. Within the Microsoft architecture, are you using partial uh, SQL? Elasticsearch is used, Redis is also used, and other NoSQL is used. Thank you very much. So many different functions are used to raise performance, and this is a product that is available to anyone. So I think that is well understood, and uh, that was a very good information for me. I would like to ask more questions, but I think due to time restraints, we have to finish. <laughs>